Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall, and today I've chartered my very first helicopter here in New York City because I want to take some really cool aerial photographs. The crazy idea I have for this is to take a 200 to 400 millimeter lens up there and shoot the city from really far away. I have no idea if this is going to work, but it's worth trying out. Have you been in a helicopter before? Well, yeah, like 50 years ago, maybe. 50 years ago? But you well, like heights, right? No, no, I don't no? like heights, no. So, are you wanting to hang out of the helicopter or be in the no, center? No, no, I'm going to be in the seat strapped in. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to double straps. Double straps? I, yeah, if you duct tape me in there, that'll even be better. Duct tape? Yeah. We'll just strap him to the seat. If he throws up, he can throw up outside the car. We'll down wash, we'll push it all down yeah. to the lovely people in New York. <laughs> After a quick bite to eat and a final bathroom break, it was time to head out and meet our captain. This is either going to be a really cool photo or this is going to be a total failure. Either way, I think this is going to be a fun trip and hopefully my dad doesn't freak out. <laughs> we wound up chartering our helicopter through Wings Air. They're based out of the Westchester Airport, which is about a 45 minute drive north of the city. After taxi fares and the entire flight time, I think the whole trip wound up being about $1,000, which is pretty incredible considering we had 60 minutes of actual flight time. We picked up some cool toys from our friends at B&H, including this wearable gimbal made by Feiyu. With this gimbal, we're able to take our GoPros, attach them to our cameras, and get really stable shots as we fly up in the helicopter. It's pretty amazing what these gimbals can do now, and this one's so small you can pretty much place it on anything. For this flight, we brought some pretty typical lenses like the Nikon 24-70 and 70-200, but we also brought this. This is the Nikkor 200-400 f4 lens, and it is massive. The reason I'm bringing this lens up with me is because I want to try something completely different from what everybody else does in a helicopter, and my initial thought was, let's try to compress New York City so that I can get a really cool skyline shot from up high in the air. If I can shoot the city at three or 400 millimeters, I'm gonna have to be really far away, but I can compress the entire city and make the largest skyscrapers look like they're all right next to each other. But enough camera talk, let's check out the helicopter. The helicopter we're gonna be riding in today is the four-seater Robinson R44. And for those of you who know absolutely nothing about helicopters, the R44, it's just a single engine helicopter with a semi-rigid two-bladed main rotor, a two-bladed tail rotor, and a skid landing gear. You know, no big deal. One problem with these gimbals is they don't mount flush with the camera. This means you're gonna hit yourself in the head every time you look through the viewfinder. I mean, who designs stuff like this? If you charter a helicopter for your own photo project, you're the guy in control. So it's really important that you're able to communicate to your pilot so you can tell them exactly where you need to go to get the shot. So make sure you get all of your microphone issues worked out well before you take off. Once you get up in the air, you're going to want to test your camera and make sure everything's working properly. Since the first shot I was going to test was the 200 to 400 millimeter shot, I needed to set my camera's shutter speed really quick to about 2,000th of a second. Because this lens is an f4, that required me to also set my ISO to 3200 just to get a good exposure. The more test shots I did with this lens, the more I started to think this was a complete mistake. The most obvious problem I had with this photograph was dealing with the wind. Not only did I have a lot of wind coming across the windshield, but the props actually threw a lot of gust downward, which made it almost impossible to put the lens outside in the open. I had the pilot position in the helicopter so that I could shoot out the side, which helped really add some contrast so I wasn't shooting through the glass. But the other big problem I didn't anticipate was just the amount of haze that was going to be over New York City. As you can see, it's a pretty clear day, but there's just so much atmospheric haze that every shot I was taking was coming out really flat. Also, because we left really late to catch the blue hour, the sun was on the near horizon, which really didn't add any extra light to the city. 
Ideally, I probably would have come out earlier, maybe two hours earlier, to really get some hard light on the city, which would have increased the contrast and made this shot even more successful. Overall, I think these two shots are pretty unique. I mean, just look at the Staten Island Bridge. That would never be in the background of a normal New York City shot unless you used a super telephoto. And I think that's really cool. But ideally, I would come back out here where there was more sunlight. I could knock my ISO lower and I could really get a more contrasty scene. But I only had a few seconds to get this shot before it was time to get right down to the tip of Manhattan and start shooting the city up close. As we flew over the South Battery, the 200 to 400 lens was just way too telephoto. You can see I got some really tight detail shots of One World Trade Center, but the lighting was really muddy. I just wasn't really happy with these shots at all. I was, however, able to shoot Midtown from all the way at the end of Manhattan, and this is a pretty cool shot. I think if I had some better lighting, it would be even better, but I really do love this composition looking all the way down the street. As you can see, the vignetting on the 200 to 400 is just crazy, so you're definitely going to want to fix that if you shoot with this lens. But it was time to move on and start shooting with the 24 to 70. <laughs> Since the sun was pretty much set and there was no light really being contributed to the scene, it was very hard to shoot wide angle. The sky was still blown out, but the building lights hadn't yet turned on. So what I did was I shot a lot of these images at 70 millimeters, and then in post I turned them into black and white images so I had that classy New York shot, even though the lighting was pretty flat. Now that Empire State had turned on its lights, I asked our pilot Anthony to do one more flyby, and as you can see from my dad's face, he wasn't too excited about it. This image wound up being one of my favorite photos from the entire session, and even at 3200 ISO, there's still so much detail. It's pretty incredible to see all these people on top of the building. Now that I had a couple cool shots of Empire State and Midtown, it was time to focus on Times Square. While Dylan Patrick shot out of his side of the helicopter, I took this time to take some cool photos of the helicopter ride itself. Two of my favorite photos from this entire trip were these shots of Times Square looking straight down. With the sun completely set and the ambient light glowing from the buildings, this was now the perfect time to photograph the city. This particular location is called Billionaire's Row and it's right at the base of Central Park. I really love this location because it shows the entire south part of Manhattan and it allows you to view all the epic buildings in one single photograph. With these chartered flights, they try to calculate the fuel perfectly and since we were about 15 minutes away from the end of our flight time, we had one final pass to shoot the city before heading back to the airport. I absolutely love the look that you get when you shoot a glowing city at the blue hour, but unfortunately, with a 2.8 lens and shooting at 3200, as good as these images turned out, I still would love to redo them. I'd love to go back up with maybe an 85mm 1.4 and just pull out even more light with a lower ISO. But to be honest, I was extremely excited to get so many great photos on my very first attempt at shooting out of a helicopter. And I was even able to walk away with a pretty unique shot of Manhattan, shot at 300 millimeters. All in all, I can't thank Anthony and the guys at Wings Air enough. This was an incredible experience, and no matter what city you live in, if you ever get the chance to charter a helicopter, I definitely recommend it. I hope my commentary on this behind the scenes video was really helpful for you, and if you would like to read all the photographic tips that I learned from this trip, head over to the link below. And if you like content like this, make sure you subscribe to the F-Stoppers YouTube channel and visit fstoppers.com regularly because we feature all kinds of photo education like this every single day.